<clears throat> Hello and welcome. Today we will be discussing the offset slider crank and we will be creating it in Creo Pro E and then in part two of this we will be analyzing it using uh, MathCAD Prime 2.0. So, uh, my name is Dan Pfeiffer, and today uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to pull up the uh, Creo software here, and it, this is what we're going to end up with. Uh, something that has uh, an input crank that can rotate 360 degrees, and it'll have an output uh, point that slides back and forth, um, and maybe we'll even try to put a little box so that it's more realistic. So if we take a look at how this works, as we increase our angle, notice that this slider joint is stuck on the uh, horizontal axis there. And then we can analyze it as it goes through its positions. And we can find the maximum and minimum uh, distances D. So the way the question is framed is shown here, <coughs> where Theta 2 is defined as the angle between the slider position D, which is on the x-axis, and link 1. Then uh, link 2 is from the origin, O2, to point A here, and that's given in this table, value, uh, table of values. So we're going to start out with theta 2 equaling 45 degrees, and I'm going to show you how I constructed this. That said, I'm going to pull this off to the side and create a new file, sketch. All right, here we go. Now, the first thing I want to do is create my coordinate system, and I do that by creating center lines. All right. Uh, useful tools. Uh, you can do shift center mouse button and then scroll that way. Or um, if you're in two dimensions in this as we are in the sketcher, you only really have to use the center mouse button and then move it around. You can push control and then the center mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. Or you can use your mouse wheel scroll when you're in two dimensions. <coughs> Alright, so got pretty much everything set. Now my table of values says that link 2 has a value of 1.4 and it is at 45 degrees. So we go back to our line tool. Now this I do want coincident with those. All right. And I'm just going to draw that line first and make sure that I have every all the parameters the way I want them. And I don't want it to measure relative to that. I so I click on that and then center click perpendicular to that and it was a value of 1.4. Now I really have to zoom in because There we go. You can also do uh, this view display settings. Uh, no, that's not it. I think it's this one. Yep, it's this button, which is another helpful tip. If you hold down the Alt key and then let it go, it tells you what each of these things is. Good to know. Uh, that's the refit button. So this is now set as a weak parameter, and I want that to be a strong parameter. So I'm going to do there, there, and the angle between them I want to be 45. Great, so we've got our first step done. Now, the next part is um, setting up my offset, and I did that by creating a line that is just and you want to make sure that that has an open circle which it does and 
you can change the uh, constraints by right clicking or you can select the endpoint and then go down to your constraints tab and I want to make it so that it is what is this called coincident great so now I've got that nice open circle that I was looking for and then this one we also want coincident with the horizontal because it's going to go back and forth but before I do that let's get it into the right height so we're going to parameterize this to 1.0 great now I want a center line here for actually I'll just do the two point center line or one point doesn't matter and it already looks like it's correct but just to be sure I'm going to select the endpoint and then make sure that it's coincident the way that I want it now I found that it was a good idea to check this by grabbing the line and if you can't move it up or down that's a good sign that you're on the right track all right. Notice that it's automatically putting in this parameter here. Uh, this it's grayed out uh, because it is um, a weak parameter. It's not a strong parameter. Strong are what I define that I don't want to change. <clears throat> now the next step is to connect the coupler link by creating a new line from here to there. and then the question asks for two things one of them was the parameter that we saw and the other is the angle of theta 3 make sure I get this correct let's go ahead and put in another reference line so that I can make sure that I get the angle that I want the angle that I want is this angle so that I measure from here to there okay now the reason that I changed it to 30 degrees was so that this would be open enough for me to actually be able to measure it if you notice that when we go back to 45 here that angle is so small that it's really really tough for me to get in there and it's 0.9 degrees actually it's so small alright so now we have our two values which is D going back to the original problem finding the slider position D and then theta 3 and we can verify that theta 4 is 90 but we don't need to because we created it vertical and horizontal so we should be all set so a couple of n little Windows tips. If you've never used the snipping tool, you can go here and then just type in snip, and it's right here, the snipping tool, and you're going to create a new snip, and what you want to do is um, drag, and it will just copy and paste right into Word. This is a great time saver. I recommend everyone use it. okay so there's my original given values now the question wanted me to look at the, all the possible values and let's re write this down delete <clears throat> ah, before we move on I forgot to make link 3 uh, length of 4 let's go back so link 3 was this length right here and we have to parameterize that not with a reference but with the normal one 4.0 all right so let's review okay so now what is the distance from here to here well I'm going to create a line there and it will then I can make that a reference
4.99. So we have an angle of 0 0.0114, or sorry, 0 0.0144. And if you can't see the, that, sometimes you can move it. But again, this is so such a small angle that um, it's going to be a little bit tougher. So 0 0.0144. Four, four degrees and it's 4.99 and I don't even know they don't even think they gave units in the problem yeah then there's no units so we'll assume meters I guess now uh, gotta take a snip of that now you have to have the tool that the window you want in front otherwise it's going to snip whatever you have there but I don't want to do that so I want to zoom out, pan over, and now I want to snip this. I'm just using Alt-Tab to switch between documents. Or just good basic computer stuff to know. Alright, so let's bring this into its open position by clicking on the uh, term that we want. We have to have our selection tool there. Um, so, and I'm going to move this up top a little bit so those aren't overlapping. Looks a little neater. Our reference is there. Our angle is there. Alright, so we're all set. So, we will click the modify button here and you modify the dimensions so that let's start with open position. Okay, so right there. Okay, so if you notice, when we're going to hit the uh, largest, it will be when this value down here is its largest. That's our open position. So 5.3, 5, I saw 7 in there. So 0.307 looked like the highest that I could get it. It's a little too light. And then it starts to go back down after we pass that position. So this is our uh, open position. And if we zoom in, we should see that these two line up pretty close to 180, and we can make sure that that's the case. Now, one thing I could do is I could m create an angle here, and then I could make them uh, 180. But I've already pretty much shown what I need to show here, and then. This has an angle of a length D of 5.307. And I want to create a snip of that. Now using similar logic, we can uh, do repeat these steps by just going to uh, modify the theta 2 value for our closed position. And when you're in here, you can still zoom in and out and pan. Uh, so that's another important thing to notice. And then the closed position will be, that's way sensitive, Okay, when these two are overlapping and it looks like this. All right, so that's the offset slider crank. and um, if you have questions, my email is here, and I hope that you learned something, and I uh, look forward to comments below, and I'm always a fan of feedback. So thanks for visiting, and have a great day.